So let's start the clock on this. People want to know the difference between the whiskers and the fences. So whenever you have data, we can take a look at some of our data right here. We're going to draw uh, just some data real quick. Let's do, let's say, five numbers because this will be easier to deal with. We have people's ages like 18, 20, 22, and let's go here with 24, and let's go here with 20 or 30. Perfect. Now, when we make a box plot of this data, we need to figure out the median Q1, Q3, and then we need to see if there's outliers. So let's do this right here. Let's draw our distribution. And actually, let me think through this real quick. I think I want to do this exactly right because I might chop these up and make these into videos. I'm going to do this with exactly seven numbers, and I'll explain why. With the seven numbers right here, we should have a middle number, and then that'll turn it into two different data sets. Okay. You ready? Here we go. So this is a little bit of a slower speed run. I'm not going to get a world record on this. Let's look at, since the data is ordered, what is the median in this data set? What is the median in this data set? The median of this data set is what? Who can tell me what the median is? Still world record pace. I like it. So if you notice, I've got an upper portion of data and a lower portion of data right here, and then a median right here. It's kind of, I always, this is the way I would do it when I was in class. I'd be like, okay, that's the median. And then if you notice, you notice why I picked these numbers. If you consider the bottom of data set and the top of data set, we can go right here, and this is going to be from our lower and our upper data sets, the two different uh, quantiles right here. So some very important stuff going on right here. So what do we have? We have figured out the median, we figured out the Q1, and we figured out the Q3. Now on the test, we'll never have you do Q1 and Q3 by hand. We will have you do median by hand. Once again, put all the numbers in order, find the middle number. If one does not exist, average them together. So this right here is Q1, and this right here is Q3. This is the median, and this is the min, and this is the max right here. We have our five number summary. From our five number summary, we'll do the following. First thing we'll draw, just like the notes, is we will draw the, uh, the box of the box plot. So let's go here and do a number line. And we'll go here to 20. And then we'll go here to 30 right here. And we're going to draw our box. The box on the box plot needs to go from the Q1 to the Q3. So I need to go here at 18 and put the start of the box. And then I need to go to Q3 which is gonna be right here at 24. This is the box of the box plot, which denotes the 25th through the 75th percentile. The median does not have to be in the center of the box, minus 20, if you notice, that's where the median is at. So we have right here in five numbers, something the chat, Jenna, 1,000 points right there. Now here's the tricky part that a lot of people make mistakes on, is now we need to draw our fences. Now we won't actually use these, but I want people to tell me once again, what is the length of the IQR? The IQR has a length of what right here? What is the length of that IQR? It is six, you might be seeing the chat soon. So with six being the length of the IQR, what is one and a half IQRs? One and a half IQRs would be what? One and a half IQRs is six times 1.5, which would be nine. We're about, we're over halfway done now. One and a half IQRs is nine, so I'm gonna go up one, literally one, and oh, that's way more than one. <laughs> I'm going to go up one and a half IQRs. Oh, that, that is one. That is one because that's 30. And I'm going to go up a half, which would be 33. This is where my fence would be at. We'll do a fence right here just in a red line for the fence. That is a fence. Now, we don't leave these in when we draw it. You won't see them in and jump. Great job right there. Kaylee, another 1,000 points. And then we're going to go down 1.5 IQRs, which would mean we'd go down to 12 you see, because I'm just subtracting six, I'm going to subtract another one, I'm going to subtract three more, and that puts this one at nine. So if you're looking at where these fences are, they're at 33, and this one's at nine, because we're just going nine down, and we would draw this fence here. We don't usually do these by hands, but it's important to know the formulas and how we do this. Now, when I do this, this is a really interesting box plot, because it doesn't have a lower whisker. There is no data in this region. If you notice, there's no values below here, so the lowest number is also the 25th percentile. So there is no bottom whisker to this box plot. That's just the way it is. This value of 18 right here represents the 25th percentile and the median. Um, you're doing my fence, I'm doing the fences right now, Addison, 1,000 points, you're exactly right. Those are the fences, and there is no lower whisker, but the upper whisker would go to where? Where would the upper whisker go to? 
where would the upper whisker go to? Does anyone have any idea where that upper whisker would go to? The upper whisker goes to the highest point right here. If you want to know something really, really weird, here's what's really weird. If we change the data, we can get a really weird box plot because if this wasn't 30 and it was something like, let's say, 35, the box plot would look like this. So you'd have a box right there and then you'd have one outlier because right now there is no data between 24 to 35 and 35 would be considered an outlier. So did everyone see kind of what happened right there where I changed up what the data looked like? When we do this right here, it is outside that range of where the fences are. Now when you draw it, especially in jump, it won't show you those fences. So that has got it. That hopefully explains what the fences are. They just tell you where outliers are. So if we change our data back right here, we go back, 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 and put this back to 30. This point now exists in this range, and we would get uh, a whisker. Whoops, that a red whisker. We want the black one right here. So this would go here. We could also magically change this data right here and say this is something like 16. And if we had that, then this would pull a whisker down to here. And the reason the whisker goes to there is because there's data there. Does that, how do we know the whisker goes to 30, not 33? Because that is the data point. The, uh, wherever the data is, that's where the whisker will go to. So the whisker denotes where the data is and it's the farthest point that is inside of that fence right there. So if the fences are less than the max, there is no outlier. Amazing right there for a thousand points and let's head right back into lecture. Great job, everyone. I think that that's a close time right there. I'm gonna challenge, uh, I don't know, we challenged Easy Escape earlier on, but he needs to get on his stat to one game. So Easy Escape, if you're listening, some stat to one speed runs for you.